Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, today, as requested by one of you, uh, we will be reading through Arthur's journal. I don't know why I messed up his name just now. <laughs> Arthur's journal. to sleep through the night because it was a bit too dark to read um, and some journal pages aren't uh, well they don't have anything to read per se just a sketch or some random notes that don't have the easier just get into it. If I remember the button, no, it's the central. Okay. As it starts to rain. To skip through the chapters to the beginning. Okay. I was hoping for a bit sunnier weather to make screen but we'll manage. So this is a map of Blackwater and on the left what I'm guessing to be the earnings from their heist in Blackwater. Uh, as you starts with the whole gang uh, running from Blackwater and trying to escape. Uh, because the heists, well, they're wanted men now in Blackwater and uh, I haven't progressed that far in the story that I can go there because it's all area and if I go there I get immediately wanted and hunted basically so yeah that's this page I don't know I mean I could guess what all the initials stand for but I really it's been too long since I played any of the story missions okay. anyway this first page or pages. This is a sketch of I'm not even sure what. It doesn't have any text. It doesn't look like sand. This new journal after the last one got destroyed in that fire all those months ago, wherever it was. Haven't written or drawn much in the past few months, but I was missing it more than I thought I would. And finally, near a store. Okay, I can't read it. <laughs> Some words are like take a second to decipher. I haven't written or drawn much in the past few months, but I was missing it more than I thought I would. And 
finally near a store, so here I am. I guess. After all that business up north and the fire, we spent a few months in the wilderness, traveling down from the northern grizzlies. Mostly in the western foothills of the mountains during the worst of the winter. Food was easy to find and life was good. Dutch had a lead for some land we were going to buy, but the land did not match up to his criteria, or he got spooked we were being watched by the law, and that somebody knew who he was, and we never bought it and we are wandering still. We picked up a couple of new folk in the Grizzlies. I don't know if this is all still the same entry. I guess not, but this must be... I don't know. Oh, well, I guess it's Jenny. The sketch on the left. Jenny, a sweet young girl we met abandoned on the roadside, and Micah, an outlaw Dutch met in a bar someplace. Dutch seems very taken with Micah, who is pretty hot-headed, argumentative, and full of himself. Jose I, no, Jose and I are less sure. Guess we shall see. Eventually, we came out of the wilderness and are now holed up outside of Blackwater, although sometimes I stay in town hunting for opportunities. I might be on to something. We got plenty of money. The trail we took was so tortuous and slow, nobody could have followed us south and east, or figured out where we was hide no where we was heading. We was thinking about California, but then Dutch and Hosea brought us down to Blackwater. This looks like the bank in Blackwater. But not entirely sure, but it would make sense. Okay, another sketch of some town street with a lot of construction going on. has apparently grown a whole lot since any of them was last year. I was told to expect little more than a trading post. But the place is growing fast, and it's almost a small city. The town seems to be riddled with corruption, but there's, but there's certainly plenty of money here. It's good to be sleeping in a bed from time to time, and living a more civilized life after so long under canvas. But I do not particularly like being this near this near to a town. We are living here, camping outside town mostly, hiding in plain sight, I guess. Life seems pretty easy. Abigail and Marston keep arguing. I wonder why exactly he came back. He cannot seem to decide if he wants to be a father to that boy of his or not. The arguing is exhausting. I heard talk of a man sounded like Trelawney, but we haven't seen him for many months. Jose and I are on to something, something pretty big. 
might be a lot of cash coming in to do with the no <laughs> it's really strangely written sometimes might be a lot of cash coming in to do with the real estate scam Hosea thinks he may have discovered I'm not sure yet the perfect crime we think one where we rob crooks we are being real careful it's fun working with Hosea again the man is an artist of nonsense. Even if nothing comes of it, we are having an amusing enough time. Some kind of river boat on the left. It's good to be running scams again. Hosea is a born huckster. He's getting anxious, worried that by lingering in town, we are going to bring undue attention to ourselves, on ourselves. But Dutch thinks he's also onto something big. His words, not mine. Bank money being brought in by boat, apparently. So for now, we are looking on both things and seeing what happens. Plan is to flee west into the desert country someplace if we can. Micah and Dutch are planning to rob the ferry in town. They think it's laden with riches, cash coming in for the banks, coming in by boat. For once, I am not getting involved in the job. Jose I and I are too taken up with our business, which I believe could go very well, and Dutch seems confident that with the group assembled, all will be okay. I guess it's possible that the cop on the right is Dutch in disguise, but maybe it's just a an actual cop. Plan is for them to carry out the job, then flee into the wilderness out to the west. The next day, Jose and I carry out our scam and join them. The Dutch seems happy and excited. He's talking again about California but he's also talking about a lot of other places. Some kind of store. Saloon. And I can't read what's on the second window. Blackwater. Sales, maybe. Mostly blank, except for one kind of badly drawn horse. Maybe this is chapter two. Everything from the I mean, all the previous pages were chapter one, Blackwater. But this is Coulter, so I guess it's the beginning of chapter two. Or maybe this is chapter one in the game, because uh, everything from the, f the previous pages was not something that was actually in the game. We have been running for weeks, I mean running more than usual. The job that was pulling in Blackwater, robbing that ferry, it turned into a disaster. Young Jenny got killed, poor thing, while Sean and Mac both got arrested or killed, and nobody seems sure which. Dutch shot a girl, I'm not too sure if by accident or design, and seems like it might have been a setup. 
we took to the hills in an almighty scamble. <laughs> in an almighty scramble, leaving money and most of our things behind. As we were fleeing east over the Grizzlies, an almighty storm hit us. Davy Callender, who had got shot in the gut on the raid, passed away. It was br brutal to watch, and the rest of us nearly froze. But we found shelter, and have been resting here in some old abandoned mining town while we wait the law. small cross next to it. Camp Coulter. Yeah, doesn't say much. Just Camp Coulter. I don't know what the drawing is supposed to be. Oh, I guess it's a train on a bridge. Hardly the spring I had been hoping for. Hosea and I are, had been planning a robbery of our own in Blackwater, but I guess that's been abandoned along with most of what we owned. I am profoundly concerned as to what happens next. Once we leave this place, or the law finds us cowering up here, found a girl, well, a woman, I should say. Her husband had been murdered by some of Como Driscoll's boys. Nasty business. It must be Sadie. Uh, Sadie Adler. out in the a very sparse landscape drawing with the gang on horseback. Okay, on the left it says Leviticus Cornwall question mark. Seems Como Driscoll had the same ideas as us. He's been hiding up here, scouting out a train he wanted to rob. We bumped into some of his boys at some farmstead they was robbing. Found that poor woman whose husband they had murdered, and she's now riding with us, as she ain't got no, uh, no place better to be. Then Dutch being Dutch and his hatred for Como just as powerful as it ever was. A whole bunch of us went to pay him a visit in his camp, but he escaped. Another train drawing, this time a bit more in detail. his boys. Poor bastard ain't spoken yet, but he will once we freeze him a little. Then set Bill on him. Seen a bad few weeks, but we're mostly still alive. Dutch being Dutch is busy making plans and figuring out just how we're going to survive. And Dutch being Dutch, those plans involve robbery and dreams. sketch of a deer. Okay, this must be... Uh, I don't know how the 
chapters are counted in this book, but the next chapter, uh, the first camp down south, uh, at a place called Horseshoe Overlook. It's a very nice sketch. Shame it's like so dark and cloudy. I could have went to a, an indoor place, like a saloon or something. Another sketch at the camp from what I'm guessing is Arthur's point of view from his bed. seems to know the country a little. Ain't been much of a spring, but now holed up at a place called Horseshoe Overlook, outside of some dumpy little cattle town named of Valentine. Some drawings of a, a horse. Dutch seems a little better. His eyes are sparkling once more, and I can see he's thinking a little clearer. I think we all feel it a little happier, in spite of black water and that whole mess. Valentine with Uncle and the girls. Girls went scouting out work while Uncle and I had a few drinks, and he explained more of his theories on existence and bare-faced lies about his past. Things took a strange turn. Some fella seemed to recognize me or us from Blackwater. Guess we had been holed up there too long while Jose and I scouted the job that never was. I chased the bastard. Oh, <laughs> I chased the bastard, and he nearly fell off a cliff. I spared him, and he gave me a pink pen. No. <laughs> oh, it's still pretty early, and it's the first thing I do is I wanted to record this video. But my brain hasn't woken up just yet. I spared him and he gave me an ink pen. I hope I won't regret my leniency, but I reckon he got the scare of his life. Jimmy Brooks was his name. Some old drunken Valentine claimed he was a sh claimed he was a shootist. Seemed more like a clown. Some poor fool was writing a book about him or trying to. Levin was the name of the writer. Jim Calloway was the killer. Apparently, Levin needs more information. Ask me to find a few folk who have spent some more time in publicity than me and knew old Jim back when he was a real killer. 
Their names are Emmett Granger, Flaco Hernandez, Billy Midnight, and Black Bell. Sound like a troop of clowns. We shall see what kinds of people those who want to be famous murderers is. My hopes are not too high. And a sketch of... I'm pretty sure that's uh, Calloway. Passed out. once more, and I saw my own life slip through mine. That gentle buffoon we kidnapped up in the mountains took us to a cabin. We were planning to kill Colm, but he had just gone our, but he had just gone elsewhere. We shot a bunch of his boys, and one was about to end my life when Kieran shot him. This feud, it's bled out from Dutch and Colm's mutual hatred into a loathing that permeates all of us and all of them. Still, I found quite a shotgun in the cabin. Some more drawings. Raspberry. What I believe are valley coyotes, or maybe wolves.
was fighting that big fellow. He begged and coughed and spluttered, and I beat him half to death. Such is life, such is the world. His boy looked at me like I was the devil, and perhaps for him I was. The whole thing confused me. Maybe that's wrong. The whole thing revolted me, my part. These sad, desperate bastards, their silly expectations of life, and their tawdry reality. The unkindness of existence, I can handle that just fine. But I do not love it, nor those who try to make things otherwise, I guess. Okay, and it's getting dark again, so might have to sleep through the night. Yeah, let's. It's a good thing I didn't tear down the camp, so it's pretty easy to just sleep again. on the left. Took a day off and went off hunting with Hosea. He really seems to be getting his strength back a bunch, although he was lucky not to die as this big bear he'd been after turned on us. I thought when we were stuck up in the mountains that the cold and the misery would kill him and we'd buried him like we buried Jenny and Davy. But he pulled through, and he'll live a while yet. Picture of a squirrel. Or a drawing, I should say, not a picture. I love Dutch like a father, but in many ways I love Hosea even more. He's kind and fair, and like a human being. Dutch is something else. This bear was also something else. The size of a goddamn hotel it was, and mean with it. Some more sketches. Some kind of... Uh, I have no idea. Some kind of prairie chicken. Definitely is a raccoon. Valentine went off drinking with young Lenny, thanks to my own peculiar genius for trouble when drunk. The evening did not go quite according to plan, but somehow neither of us got killed or arrested for murder despite my best efforts in that regard. Somehow, I don't imagine that the saloon owner in Valentine likes me very much after the mayhem I have caused there. Can't read it. Smith Fields Saloon.
the sea, standing and shouting by the side of the road in certain places. I'm still not sure if there's any purpose to him story-wise, or if it's just a random thing. And more sketches of wasted earning that stuff. Guess I'll never quite know what happened, but the upshot is we're on the run, and known to more folks in authority than we should, than we would like. With another sketch of a dog of some station told me that I could get decent money if 
if I collected complete sets of cigarette cards and sent them to him. We shall see. Sounds harmless enough. Okay, we have more sketches of a bison. man alive and I feel like a fool. That woman confuses me and plays me for a fiddle like no one else alive. Her little brother Jamie had joined some religious order and needed saving, or so she and the god-awful daddy seemed to have thought. I took him home after a pathetic little squabble. Poor boy. Wonder what will come of him. Education and an unpleasant father have been a terrible curse for him, I fear. And a sketch of Mary on the left. Maybe a wolf in some bushes. I don't know. As for Mary, I trust I will not make a god-awful fool of myself once more. But somehow I imagine I shall. Arthur loves Mary. I found Flaco Hernandez for that silly book. Killed him. Bastard jumped out of the way, but I still got him. Didn't seem like the type I was going to befriend anyway. A drawing of blackberries and another horse. Jose and I went robbing, just like in the old days. A father and son of clowns at some farmhouse, stole a wagon, sold it to some, uh, some rat Jose had met at some odd place called Emerald Ranch. What goes on there I cannot tell, but this little purchaser of stolen goods had us go rob his own family. Even by my standards that was low. But the father and son we robbed was proof that even God makes mistakes sometimes. And a nice sketch of a windmill and a farmhouse. Uh, sketches of a badger, I think, or a skunk. Yeah, I guess more like a skunk. They are performed brilliantly as some kind of huckster selling restorative care to crooks' backs. All thing was utterly ridiculous and brilliant. Hummingbird sage. Billy Midnight never escaped his past. Guy was deranged about shooting some fella in the back, or in their sleep, or something else very sensible, in my opinion. Anyway, guilt had consumed him, so like a real proper gentleman, he tried to kill me.
check out fishing as a favor to Abigail. Many years ago, before she fell so hard for that fool Marston, perhaps I should have married her. I think part of me has always thought that, yet God damn you, Mary. Jack is a good boy, a dreamer, a boy with a mama who loves him. I wonder if he will find what we seek, peace and truth away from all this nonsense and lies. Is that what we still seek? Not that that's a new development. Not sure I know myself anymore. Sometimes I'm not sure Dutch does. As we fished, a couple of Pinkerton agents appeared. Milton was one of them. I forget the other fellow's name. They knew all about me. That's a new turn of events. Apparently there's five thousand on my head alone. After Blackwater, or maybe before, it seems we may be in real trouble. I just don't know. Dutch don't seem too worried, but I'm beginning to have some doubts as to this wisdom and his indifference. very crudely drawn duck, uh, some kind of pheasant, I think, and a bird of song, or a songbird. <laughs> it's not like bird of prey, bird of song, just, anyway, and a nice sketch of, I guess, a wolf. scientist, Deborah something or other, seemed to be more mad than sane, but I don't have much frame of reference for scientists, wanted me to see if I could help her find dinosaur bones, and send her the details, maybe.